Welcome to the video. Today we're doing something a little bit different to what we normally do here on the channel. We're moving away from gaming and going to become a little bit more technology focused. So what are we talking about today? Well, keep on watching and you're going to find out what the quick keys is all about. The quick keys. What is it? Where's it from? Who makes it? Well, I can't pronounce the name of who makes it. So I'm just gonna have it on the screen and you're gonna work out for yourself how you pronounce the name of the manufacturer of this device. But the quick keys, this is it right here, fits in the palm of your hand. But what is it? Well, it's a shortcut device. If you've heard of the Stream Deck made by Elgato, then you'll have an idea of what this is. However, is it quite as good as a Stream Deck? Well, that's a question probably for another video, but today we're gonna to talk about what this actually does. And basically it's a device for shortcuts. It's got a wheel at the top that allows you to do various things that require a wheel. And it's got various buttons that allow you to do various things that require button pushes. But what kind of button pushes? Well, it's all about shortcuts and making shortcuts easier. We all know that on a Windows machine, Control C and Control V allows you to copy and paste. This device allows you to do that with just the press of a button and you can control it to do any kind of shortcut that you would like to do, pretty much. But we'll talk about that as we get further into the video. But let's take a look at it a little bit more in depth. Now, if I click that brush button in the top left, I can start using the brush. So what that button does is turn it into the brush tool. Then by using the wheel, I can zoom in and out because I've got the zoom configuration set for the wheel. By pressing the fit and view button, it sizes the image automatically to fill the screen. Now I press the button in the middle of the wheel and it changes the functionality. So there you saw it rotate. Now we've changed it to the functionality that allows me to make the brush larger or smaller. And as you can see, the brush gets larger and I can paint with a larger diameter. Press the button here on the left side. You can see it changes the button set. If we press the brush panel, it brings up the brush panel and similar for the color panel as well. It brings up the color panel. Now, what if you don't want to use it in a horizontal position like that? Well, you can actually rotate it around four different positions. You can do it with the wheel on the right. You can do it with the wheel at the top, the bottom, the left. All you have to do is go into the quick keys configuration application and then simply change the orientation. And it allows you to use it in any of the four orientations that you should choose. Just basically whatever works best for you. Let's take a look at how you configure this thing. As you can see, we can have different profiles for different applications. The profile on the left, the yellow globe is global, and then we can have individual settings for different applications, and we can have unlimited applications. Now, by going into the wheel menu or the dial click sequence settings, as they call it, you can change the color, you can change the speed sensitivity of the dial, you can change how bright the color around the outside is, here we'll take a look at how we configure keystrokes. You just click into the box and then you just press the key combination that you want the wheel to perform, which is very, very useful. You can use this to set up a sequence of keys should you want to. Now let's take a look at the buttons here. We have modifiers, we have tablet options. Not really sure how that works, but we can do navigation. We have some Siri functionality there. We can do mouse clicks and eraser, or we can disable buttons should we not want to use them. We can go to the buttons and we can add special functions as well as keystrokes. We can do F keys or we can do showing the dock or having a capture selection, which is like a screen grab. And you can do this for any of the five sets that are available and then you can just enable or disable the sets that you want to use. Well, let's take a look at some positives and negatives about the quick keys made by a company whose name I cannot pronounce. So first, let's jump into the positives because that's the good stuff, right? So let's talk about the positives. Firstly, I think it's easy to configure. You've seen me configure it. It is very simple to do. The design I think is actually really nice. It fits in the hand very nicely. It's got a rubber backing so it doesn't slide around on your desk. The wheel is very good. The buttons are well positioned. The name of the keys come up exactly as you type them in the application. Um, the buttons are very reachable. It's suitably clicky. It feels really nice. It feels good in the hand. It doesn't feel ridiculously premium, but it doesn't feel ridiculously cheap. It's made out of fairly nice plastics and a little bit of metal here and there. Another huge positive for me is the wireless connectivity. Now, as I said, you can use it via USB or you can use it wirelessly. One of the downsides of the Stream Deck for me was having a cable. I know, first world problems, but having cables all over the desk and it kind of limits you to how you can position your devices depending on where your computer is. 
So having the wireless option actually is really, really nice. So I, I'm very pleased that that's there. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to give this a try. USB-C is another plus here. It works with a Mac and PC. Overall, it's a good little device with lots of positives, but there are negatives as well. And I think it's only fair that we do talk about those here in this video. So let's say, for example, you're using it for work. You're on a Teams meeting and you want to mute yourself or unmute yourself, but you're working on a spreadsheet or whatever it is you do for your work. You have to actually switch to the application that you want the command to go to for it to work. That's annoying. This does limit the quick keys functionality somewhat. Hence me saying this is more of a productivity tool as opposed to like a streamer or real creative tool. When you're focused on an application like Photoshop, for example, great, it's gonna work while you're in that application. When you switch to another application, it will automatically switch to that other application's profile that you've configured, which is also great. It allows you to keep that productivity going. But like I say, if you're trying to do commands such as maybe play music, skip tracks in the background while you're doing that other work, this device isn't gonna cut it for you. Talking of music, when it comes to OS integration, it is very, very limited. As you saw when we did the configuration, there were options, there were some integrations with specific OS options. And to be fair, that was for Mac. I haven't looked at this on a PC. You could use Siri and some other bits and pieces, but it doesn't do stuff like just play music in the background. So although it does have OS integration, it is very limited, which does damage this device slightly for me, I would say. The dongle that it comes with, which you have to use in order to use it wirelessly, is USB-A. That, that is an oof, because as with my example, I use a laptop, I don't actually use a desktop, and I only have USB-C on my laptop, which means I have to use an adapter with it. So that's a downside, and it'd be good if they would start providing USB-C dongles. You can't even buy them as an extra on the website. No, no, no. Now, there are no downloadable profiles available. No such joy here with the quick keys. You have to make them all up yourself. Now, if you go on the internet and you manage to find other people that have quick keys, that have built their own profiles, they can export those and you can download them and import them to your device. But the manufacturer do not provide any. It would be really good if the manufacturer would just put some up on their website that you could use, but they don't. You have to build all of your own. A problem I have with the dongle is that it hasn't proven particularly reliable. When you plug it into a laptop, it works fine but I use a dock and when I have it plugged into the dock via USB-A, it's been very, very hit and miss. I'll dock the laptop and the device won't work and I'll have to go onto the computer and fire up the driver or disconnect the dongle and reconnect it. It's not ideal. When I use the USB-C adapter and plug into the USB-C port on my uh, dock, it seems a little bit more reliable, uh, certainly a lot more than the USB-A option, but there have been times when I've still had to manually fire up the driver. So if you're using a dock, you might want to think carefully about this because you do have to use the dongle in order to use this device wirelessly. Another downside is that the device does not store profiles. So if you want to use it from one device to another, you have to have the application and driver installed on every computer that you're using it on and have the profiles that you want installed on there as well. So the overall question is, should you get a quick keys? Well, you should have heard enough by now to be able to make that decision for yourself. It's not something I can tell you. If you just want productivity, if you do a lot of video editing or photo editing and you're in the application just on it all day long, then you can use this and this will work. It's a luxury item to have. If you get this set up just right and really integrated into your flow, then I think it's gonna be a really good product to have, especially at 90 pounds or 80 pounds. Um, it's not a huge lot of money. And if you don't like it when you bought it from Amazon, you can send it back within a window of time. So it is worth giving it a look. I just think you've got to be very, very aware of what you're purchasing it for. So overall price, good connectivity, wireless, so good functionality. You can program macro keys, so you can program it to press one key followed by another or one key plus another. So you can set up strings of commands. So good. Should you buy it? I think it's worth a shot. I think it's worth a shot. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you have liked this video, then please remember to like and subscribe, do all those YouTube -y things, and hopefully uh, I will be able to send some more videos out into the internet for you to watch in the future. Thank you again for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.